the ruins of Brooklyn, the most famous track in the history of motor racing. From 1907 until the outbreak of the Second World War, this was the fastest and most exciting course in the whole world. Although originally made as a test place for new car designs, man's sporting instinct turned Brooklyn's into the motor racer's mecca. Every new mechanical and technological advance was utilized by those who devoted their lives to breaking records of speed and endurance. When men came here to duel against each other in the game of speed, the eyes of the world focused on the tournament. fortunes were gambled on this track. Reputations were made and lost here by the motor industries and private promoters. While the men who drove the cars risked their lives for the pure glory of winning. Every schoolboy's idol was a racing driver. They were the heroes of their time, and their names became bywords for courage and daring. John Cobb, K. Don, George Easton, and Malcolm Campbell. But for a few glorious years, one man's image shone more brilliantly than all the others. The daredevil sportsman who charmed the crowds, Captain Sir Henry Birkin, known quite simply as Tim. On a sunny day in June, the tranquil village of Blakeney on the North Norfolk coast hummed to the tune of Bentley Motors. They were arriving from all over the country for a very special gathering to pay tribute to the memory of Tim Burton. Members of the Bentley Drivers Club were invited to come and be reminded of the important connection between Tim Burton and their old vehicle. Over 40 cars made it. Most were Bentleys from the 20s and 30s, the period of greatest innovation and development in the motor industry. The favorites on show were the six which Tim Birkin himself had once owned and raced. Though these powerful record breakers were not designed for elegance, they still have their own rough charm. But Tim Birkin chose them because he wished only to prove that they were the best. Tim Birkin's first big race was at Brooklands in 1927. Yet only two years later, when he drove number 32 in the 500-mile race, he was already the most famous and admired British racing driver. He and his team were so devoted to their car, they were nicknamed the Bentley Boys. He was intensely patriotic and held a burning ambition to see Great Britain dominate both the English and continental circuits. The Italian car maker, Bugatti, described Birkin's Bentleys as the fastest lorries in the world, a reference to the British motor industry's unwillingness to develop a proper racing car which would compete with the foreigners, Maserati, Alfa Romeo, and Mercedes. He was rich enough to buy his own car, and compete in them wherever he chose. Nobody could fail to notice Tim's cool fearlessness. Even when he didn't win a race, he usually managed to break new records of speed and endurance, and he always won the admiration of the other drivers. In those days, the men who raced were a mixed bag of gentlemen. Though they were usually wealthy enough to support their sport, they raced for higher things than money. But the cost was enormous. A good workshop required a team of a dozen experienced mechanics who'd be prepared to work day and night until they dropped. And the team would have to be transported, housed, and fed at a dozen different venues each year. To the spectators in that golden age of motoring, the life of the racing driver was nothing but glamorous. The crowds came for the excitement of seeing men flirt with death. 
Yet the greater the danger, the more modest was Tim Birkin, and his public loved him for it. Although Tim had been driving Bentleys since 1925, it was three years later that he commissioned a full race specification four and a half litre motor. That year, he raced at Brooklyn, Le Mans, Nuremberg, the TT at Ards and Boulogne. But despite modest success in all those races, he was not satisfied that his cars went fast enough. So he opened his own workshop at Wellin Garden City. He was determined to make his cars go a lot quicker than ever W.O. Bentley had intended. At vast expense, he developed a special supercharger known as the Blower. W.O. Bentley, on the right, did not approve. In his opinion, the supercharger would overstress the engine and undermine the Bentley reputation for reliability. Nineteen twenty-nine, and Tim Burton entered the legendary twenty-four hour race at Le Mans. He led a team of four Bentleys, co-driving with the diamond millionaire Wolf Bonato in the first speed six. Throughout the race, the Bentley team led. The other competitors had a chance. W.O. Bentley was there to watch the race. When it became clear that at least two Bentleys would win, he said nothing. But the whole team came in. First, second, third, and fourth. Tim Birkin and Wolf Bonato were victorious. They had driven 1,777 miles at an average speed of 74 miles an hour. A new world record. The Birkin team had done it. 